Hello, I'm Mr. Tie-Dye and today I'm going to do a more detailed stitch design. I've had lots of requests for various ones and the one I've chosen is to do the dark side of the moon here. So, but to start with I wanted to kind of talk about what uh, I do to start to set up. So first off I have a, just a clean tea. It's not been soaked in soda ash. Um, Sometimes I'll pre-wash, but not always, because I've had really good luck with the Gildan teas not giving me a problem with the soda ash not soaking in. So that's a personal choice there. And the other thing is I have stuck one t-shirt inside of another. Uh, when I do the stitch designs, I like to work on two t-shirts at a time. That just helps. I like the, the thickness of the fabric but also then I get two t-shirts out of it so one of them usually is an order and then the other one I can put into my store and it just helps me keep my prices down so anyways that's the the t-shirt um, the next thing I do is I draw my design on uh, sometimes I'll just use a washable marker but most of the time I use an artist pencil uh, when I'm doing the stitch designs, I usually stitch it first, pull the threads, and then I soak it in soda ash. And the washable marker won't last through the, the soda ash. So I had already had this one drawn on before I decided to do the, the video. Uh, but I will go back over this after it's been stitched with the artist pencil. Um, I'm also working on the inside of the t-shirt because the artist pencil doesn't always wash out so if I'm gonna have little bits of pencil marks left on the t-shirt that don't get covered up with the black dyes then it's gonna be on the inside so the other thing that needles I use the one I'm currently using is one of these ballpoint needles but in the past I've used the the sharps and those have worked good too but I really like the ballpoint needles and I just find these at uh, Joann's. And then the thread that I use is upholstery thread. Uh, Coates is the brand that I find at Joann's. It's extra strong. Um, I use the kind of beige color. Uh, that way if you use white it's not going to show up on your t-shirt and if you use black then when you go back after you've dyed it and you're trying to cut the threads, the black thread can be hard to find in there. So I usually like to have an off color and this tan one works really nice. And then the other things I have are a thimble for my thumb. This one here I had made it uh, physical therapy for me. And then this one here is just an old canvas and leather one that I've taped up because it got holes in it. So that's just for protecting my fingers as I'm working. So, let's go ahead and get started here. So I already have some thread out, but usually what I'll do is I'll cut a piece of thread, uh, probably three or four feet long, and then I tie a, a nice big knot in the end of it there. I think you can see that there. So this is the way that I do it. I, the, this stitching it can be done in so many different ways, and I'm sure everybody can figure out their own way that works best for them. Uh, just from the other few stitchers that I've seen pictures of their work, I know that they do them in lots of different ways than what I do. So I'm not saying anything is right or wrong, I'm just saying that this is the way that I do it. But I encourage you to find the way that works best for you. So, to get started here, I like to usually kind of plan my stitching out just a little bit. So let's zoom in. So on something like this here, what I'm going to do is run some short uh, lines and then I'm trying to bring things together where I can tie threads off together. So what I'm going to do is run a line from this corner here, or from the middle here up to this corner, and from here down to this corner. And then that way those two threads can be pulled and joined and tied together and they'll do the same thing going the other directions on this triangle here. Uh, it doesn't always work out that way. So like for this straight line here, what I'll do usually for that is I'll run one down the middle and then I'll one run on either side. And then the same thing for up here. I'll stitch on each one of these lines and then I'll run another thread right up the middle and depending on how much space 
So like on some of these ones here, I might run a couple extras just to gather up some of that extra space in there. Because as you're pulling the threads, then things can kind of get bunched up. So you want to try to keep your lines, or at least that's the way I like to do it. I like to have everything come out nice and flat and separated. So we're just going to jump into this. Uh, parts of it are just going to be fast forward if I don't have anything to say, but if I have a caveat to add, I will slow down and talk to you. So, Anyways, we're just going to do the stitching here. Usually what I like to do is about a quarter inch stitch on there, but I'm not anal about making sure that it's always a quarter inch. That's just about where I aim for. And then I usually also like to, you'll see me kind of wiggle the fabric here. That's just working the needle through. I don't like to just shove it straight through because if, if this gets hung up on a thread, you might break that little thread in there and then that can just lead the holes down the road. So since this here is a knit, it doesn't take much, just a little bit of a wiggle to work the point of that needle through. And I'll usually do, you know, four or five pushes through and then pull the whole thing through. And I just keep working until I get up to the corner. And then at that point, I pull it all the way through. And I like I say, I like to tie a nice big knot on the end here. And that's going to keep it from pulling all the way through and creating a big hole there. So it's just a matter of tying a, a large knot and I'll demonstrate how I do that quite quickly. I just grab the loop or the end of the thread and I make a loop here. Stick my finger in that loop and then I just kind of wrap it up several times so it's kind of twisted right there. And then I take that end of that thread, poke it through the loop And let's see if you can see that. So now I got this big wad there and I just kind of scoot it down until it forms a nice big knot. Anyways, that's how I do it. I know, uh, I think Cameron, he puts uh, toothpick toggles on those. And that looks like that works really well, but I'm so used to doing it this way that this is just the way that I'm going to continue to do it. But you're free to experiment and figure out what method works the best for you. So as I'm stitching, I usually just keep going around and depending on what design it is, sometimes I have to get kind of creative in how I run the stitches. But it's just a matter of about you want to gather up all of the lines that you're going to die along. And once I get that done, then I'll draw the lines on both sides of the t-shirt. And then I'll go along, and that's when I fill in, do all the filler lines. And you'll see that, of course, later on. And the other thing is I'm stitching, I like to kind of smooth and make sure that I'm not getting any wrinkles. As I'm picking the t-shirt up, moving around, I, I don't want a wrinkle to get in there. And then if I stitch across it, then that wrinkle is going to cause a distortion. So each time I'm kind of starting in a new area or new direction of the design, I'll usually try to make sure I've smoothed things out and feel for any of the the wrinkles or creases that may have formed in there just from picking it up.
Also, when I'm doing uh, smaller areas that are going to basically have just more detail to them, this one here doesn't have a lot of little detail, but if I was doing like a VW bus and you got the little lights and stuff, those ones I'm going to use an even smaller stitch because uh, a quarter inch stitch when you're running only, you know, an inch, you're only going to have four stitches in there. So running a little bit smaller of a stitch and that's something you just have to kind of determine in the moment as you're working and after you've done a few designs you'll kind of get a feel for just how big the stitches need to be and where you need to put your filler lines at but I always get all my main outline done first before I start on this filler line and that just makes it easier when I'm going to flip this over and I want to draw the design on the back side. If I had all of the filler lines on here also, then I wouldn't really be able to see which ones are which. So I start by doing all of the outlines first, draw the design on both sides, and then I start working on the filler lines. Okay, so now I have all of my lines drawn that are going to be for my coloring. And next I'm going to go over everything with this artist pencil here. So on this side it's going to be harder to see just because I already have the other markers on there. The artist pencil, this here is a 8B and it just has a, a soft lead so drawing on the t-shirt is easier if you were to use like a number two pencil it might be a little more difficult to get a decent line on here without a bunch of scribbling so what I'm doing is just going over all these lines because when I soak this in soda ash all the washable marker is going to fade off of here so now I'll have the pencil lines so I'll know how to dye my t-shirt here. Okay, so there's all of my outline lines now. So now what I'm going to do is go along and do all of the filler lines. And what that's going to do, like I say, is gather up the extra fabric. So I'm going to run on either side of this line here. I'm going to run inside all of these. And that way when I'm gathering things up, this all this big fabric here is going to bunch up nice and even. And then same thing on the inside of this triangle here. So a lot of times what I'll do is run lines, if I have some pretty consistent lines here, I'll just run more lines just like it on the inside to help gather that up. And I'll probably do inside and outside 
just so that that's nice and secure there and flat for my dying. So I'm just running this maybe a little more than a quarter inch away from the other line. Ow! And you gotta be careful not to stick the needle underneath your fingernail. And then usually when I end down here where I'm going to tie this off, I don't like to put poke the other hole up. Let's see if I can get that up there. I don't know if you can see that. But I like to have a little bit of a space from the needle, the hole, the line that I'm going to tie off to. Because if you make that too close, where you only have like a couple threads in there, then when you pull that tight then all that pressure is sitting just on those two little threads there so I like to have just a little bit of a gap a t-shirt in between the two the two ties here when I tie that off and that gives just more of a, a base for tying I hope that makes sense Okay, and then also sometimes the shape of the space is going to determine. Well, I can move this in the right direction here. <laughs> okay, so on this corner here, I pulled these two down to here. But this one here. I got this other shape in here. So rather than trying to run two lines up right here, I'm just going to fill in this little triangle here. So sometimes you just make adjustments as to what the space requires for gathering the extra extra space in there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to run this out, loop it around, bring it back. So, let's see if I can get that up there. I don't know if you can see those lines or not, but basically I started down here and I looped, well, I looped up and around and back down to there. So that way I can gather this whole space up by pulling these two threads and that will gather the excess up in that little triangle. I know I fast forward through quite a bit of this video, but it's been just over an hour uh, and I've got my outline stitched and I've got just the start of my inner threads stitched. So I did two rows around these corners here and then I still have this big gap in the middle that I'm going to do some more stitching on to gather that up and then I'm going to run these lines, but I need to take a quick break. I'll be right back. Okay, we're ready to get started here again. So what I'm going to do is just add some more stitches in here. And when I get this all the way filled in, then I'll go ahead and zoom in and show you all of the inner stitching that I've done here. But it's just about gathering this extra space up so that when my other lines are gathered, all of this blank space will be gathered up nicely also.
So now what I've done here is I've stitched on all of the lines and then I stitched all of the fill space. So like on this one here I ran one line on each side and then the same thing for each one of these. There's a, a stitch run on either side of the line. So there's three lines going up there. And then I filled in all of the inner space here. Uh, the last thing that I have on the outside space is I have two gaps here that where the pattern is going to run all the way down here but I'm going to have this gap in the middle so I'm going to run some stitches in there just to gather that up because I don't want that flopping over on the, onto my line either side here so that's the other thing you need to be aware of is I do the inside space but some of the outside spaces need to be gathered also So basically what I did here was I just kind of ran a teardrop shape and came up. So both of my ties are right up here and there's a little bit of space in between them. So when I tie that off and then I'm just going to run one more line straight up the middle in this teardrop shape here. And that just helps gather all of that space up so it's not flopping around when I'm trying to put the die down. Okay, so here's what we got. So we filled in all of these spaces here so that when I pull these threads here, all this inner space, I can gather it up also. So you can see I ran, well, you can't quite see those, but I ran a thread along all of these lines and then side by side. And the other thing, when I'm running them all in a row, I try to, I mean, I'm not anal about getting them exactly even but you can see these three these three the you know they're all kind of lined up so when I gather this line it's going to gather up all together so and then I filled in a couple extra spaces here on these bigger shoulders here the smaller space here that should go down fine so I'm gonna set up here and start pulling these threads oh let's look at the bottom the back side here so this here is sometimes easier without the extra threads in there. You can see all of that inner space. And we'll get set up here. Okay, so now we're set up. We're going to start pulling the threads. And what I usually like to do is try to pull the threads the inner threads in some of these little shapes so I'm going to pull these ones and these ones and then I'll work on these and then I'll start pulling these corner pieces here and there's no right or wrong way to do this that's just the way that I found kind of works easiest for me is if I collapse some of that inner space in there so it's just a matter of figuring out which threads you need to pull so sometimes that can get confusing, but I just kind of move them aside and see which ones. Sometimes I'll give a little tug just to see which threads. And then I just start giving them all a little pull, tighten them up. I don't try to put too much tension. I just like to gather it, but not have it tight. Because once I tie it, I don't want all that pressure pulling on the little tiny holes here where I've poked the needle through. So, I try to gather it, but not pull it too tight. So, we'll just go through and gather all of these up. And for me, what I like is to have everything try to lay as flat as possible. Sometimes, some of the shapes I do, <clears throat> they will kind of bunch up on me, but if possible, I like to have them stay flat. And that just makes the dyeing easier for myself.
and then I try to clip these out of here as I tie them off just to make it less confusing so I can see which threads I still have left to tie. So I pulled the inner threads here, now I'm going to pull these two outer threads. So that will just help the design take some shape and sometimes I'll pull on it to straighten some of these creases out as I tighten that up. And this is just something you have to just kind of work it and just see how it works the best for you. When I started stitching I just kind of jumped in and just started trying stuff and seeing what worked the best and kept that and tried to develop new techniques as I could. And I'm not always going to trying to keep the exact shape like this pyramid is probably going to end up more of a, a round shape but the main thing is I'll have my line so I'll know right where to put my die so it doesn't really matter what the the shape ends up being once all the threads are pulled but sometimes the design it will I can space it just perfect and it collapses down and just looks like a little mini version of itself And the other thing, I don't want to pull them too tight because sometimes you, know, if the it's pulled too tight, then that will block the die from seeping down inside these creases. So you still need to have it loose enough for the die to get in there. So I just work on the inner ones first, and now I'm working on the more outer ones, and then I'll slowly get all the way out to the outline. And that just seems what works the best for me. But you can experiment and try other ways and see if you can develop your own technique if you like. I'll usually give them three ties on there just to make sure I don't want my threads to slowly come undone as I'm soaking it or spinning it out or anything. So. Each one of these knots, I'll tie it at least three times. Okay, now this here is my white line that's going to go into the pyramid. So we're just going to pull all three of those threads that I have all together. And as I pull this, I'm not trying to pull just completely on that. I'm going to work this fabric up this thread, just so I'm not creating a lot of pressure on any one of these points along the way here. So, I mean, I usually don't do long runs, but if it's a straight line, then I'll do a, a full long run. But then I just slowly gather that up. And you can kind of pull on your t-shirt or tapestry on the sides here just to kind of pull these out from this line here as you're getting everything lined up just right and once again I'm not gonna cinch that all the way down completely tight because I want to have some flexibility to have the die get down inside so I'll pull it up as tight as I want and then I'll kind of sort it so that I have just a little bit of space in there and that's just going to allow, as I'm putting the die on, or I can poke the bottle down in the, the cracks there. And now we'll go for each one of the, the rainbow bands here. <clears throat> So each one of these I have three lines and I'm pulling, so I'm doing the same type of thing. So I'm just holding on to that. And you can usually pull and scoot that. And then I'm going to scrape these down along that line as I'm holding tension right here. And on this one here, before I start tying it, sometimes since these are all in a row here in this fan, if you start pulling all of them at the same time 
then you can get the design to lay flatter because then you can readjust if needed any of the tension areas so some of these I'll go ahead and pull them but not tie them off just yet and that's something you just have to kind of make a, a judgment call as you're working to see which way is going to be the best for them <clears throat> And right now I'm working, I've got all of them pulled up tight here, or semi-tight. And now I'm going through and working with the individual threads and just trying to get all of my lines lined up here. So I'm just kind of adjusting the folds string by string here to get just the right tension or tightness that I want and get the slack pulled out. Mostly I'm trying to get this part here to lay mostly flat. This here I can scrunch up, but I want the design to try to lay as flat as possible. So I'm just adjusting the tension on each one of these threads individually. Like I say, once you get started doing stitching and you work into some designs, you'll kind of get a feel for this and you'll find your own flow for how you like to do it. Okay, I think I got that kind of how I want it. So before I tie them off, I'm going to kind of try to lay this out flat. But see, I got little too much tension in some areas so probably what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna stitch all of this up here let me zoom back out here so my design isn't quite laying as flat as I want I probably pulled these a little bit tighter so I'm gonna loosen those up a little bit and I can try to just kind of reach in there and just pull just a little bit of that tension out just to try to get this to lay flatter. The other thing I can do, which is probably what I've done on the past ones, is go ahead and stitch and gather up some of the, all of this here because I got all this extra fabric in between the top line of the, the rainbow and the white line coming in here. There's just a lot of fabric here. So I could probably scrunch this when I'm doing my tying or folding after I soak it but I'm gonna take a little bit of time and just run a few stitches through here just to try to flatten that area out and then we'll tie this off so I usually just kind of move all that stuff out of my way and go back to stitching and this is something that sometimes different designs will require that But the nice thing, when I'm doing this after I've tied it up like this, then I can run one thread and I can kind of start pulling that and tighten it up and see just where else I need to run the thread at. So we're just going to start up here by the shoulder. And I'm going about uh, two and a half inches or so away from the design. Uh, that part there is going to lay flat enough. I'm just trying to gather up the bulk of this. And this one I'm going to run much bigger threads because I'm not worried about trying to get a nice precise line here. So it doesn't have to be thin, thin little uh, folds like over here. This here is just about gathering up space. So I'm running up to an inch long thread or stitches on here. So now there's my first thread that I've run across there. 
So what I'm going to do is try to get these folds down in here, pull that semi tight just to see how that is laying there. And then rather than cut this and run another thread, I'm just going to poke this in and run back the other direction an inch or two away from this other thread just to continue to get this t-shirt to lay in the way that I have it folded here. And that's just going to make it easier after I soak this and we go to get the rest of the t-shirt tied up if this part here is wanting to lay nice and flat then we don't have to worry about trying to do anything with it. So what I did is I started here and I ran down across here and then I ran the thread back through here and I'm going to run one more across here just to really secure that in nicely. And once again this here is just kind of a personal choice for me. Uh, you very easily could soak this in soda ash and then just tie this part up with kite string and that will work also. But when I'm doing a stitch design I figure I might as well take the little extra time to get things to lay flat. So I like the way that looks a little better now. It's still not completely flat but that's okay. I can still work with that. So I'm going to go ahead and just take this thread here and I just kind of run it through there a couple times, loop it back on itself and then that gives me enough tension that it's not going to go any place. Okay, so now back to this. So I'm going to tighten these up just a little bit how I want them. And then I think we're going to call that good and we'll probably soak this in soda ash. So I'll get all of these tied off. Okay, so there is my design. Like I say, I got just a little bit of a poofiness to that but that's going to be fine. So I'm going to soak this in soda ash for 20 minutes and then we'll get to dyeing it. Okay I'm back now. The t-shirt uh, has been soaked in soda ash and spun out so now it's just barely damp and you can see that like my center line and most of the other lines uh, have disappeared. What I have left now is just my pencil lines and then you can see just a little bit, I don't know, maybe you can or can't, but around these lines there's a little bit of pink. That's just the last bit of the washable marker. Um, so anyways, that's the reason why I use the pencil, so that you can still see your lines after you soak it in soda ash. So what I'm going to do now is just scrunch up the rest of this t-shirt to get it ready for dyeing. Okay, so there's the Dark Side of the Moon t-shirt. Uh, so I'm going to put some gloves on and then we'll get this dyed up. Okay, now we're back and ready to dye the Dark Side of the Moon. Um, one thing I realized as I was getting set up to dye is that I made the mistake way back at the very beginning. Whenever you do a non-symmetrical design on a t-shirt, and you work on the inside of the t-shirt you flip the image around and I didn't flip the image so this one here when I turn it right side out instead of pointing this way it's going to point that way so that was my one mistake but we're going to continue forward with this so you can see uh, the rest of the results so what I have here is some thick gray dye um, what I did is just took a little bit of my thickened water and added a few drops of the thick black dye to it. And that gave me the thick gray dye. Um, normally I would outline all of the lines on a design with black. But on this particular design I don't want everything outlined with black. 
the triangle is going to be outlined with the gray and then we'll put just thick water on the white line there and then of course I'm not going to outline in between the rainbow stripes we'll just color those and I'll use regular dyes so basically for my thick dye I like to let's zoom in just a little bit I like to make it the consistency so that when I put a little stream of dye out it's not going to spread too much so we're like regular dye when I put it down you can see how much the regular dye let's see if I get that yeah the regular dye the turquoise spread much more than the gray so it's just a matter of playing with your consistency of your thick water to get it just how you like it for how much it's going to spread and I don't want the thick dye to spread too far so let's zoom back out so what I'm going to do to start with is I'm going to outline the triangle so I'm just going to go right along and I take my bottle and I just kind of poke it down into those cracks and that's another reason why I like to not pull the strings really tight it allows me then to be able to poke my bottle down inside because with the thick dye it doesn't spread as much because it's thick so you have to sometimes push the dye in a little further so I can poke this bottle down in between all the cracks and get down inside there so this will put the triangle as a gray outline And then we'll do the inner part here. This is the beam through the prism. And we'll put gray in there. And I'll fill the rest of that in later. Okay, now for the thick water, I'm going to go along this line here. This is our beam of light that comes in. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to kind of poke that down inside. And this here is going to help hold space. I'm going to put thick black dye on either side of this. So I'm going to go a little bit away from the line and I'm going to lay the thick black dye down. And that thick water is going to help hold this space here so that the dye is not going to spread. I mean of course this is thick black dye but the rest of the t-shirt I'm going to dye with regular black dye and we don't want that liquid to try to spread into this white line so right now I'm just kinda outlining it and I'll do the same thing around the triangle around the prism with the thick black and then the rainbow lines will go right up next to those And if you're using regular dye, then you want to go a little further away from this line and let your dye spread in. So this design can be done without the thick black dye, but the, but the thick dye just makes it easier. And sometimes I'll use my cuticle pusher to basically push that dye further in to the t-shirt. Since mostly it just wants to sit on top where, it, where I laid it down. Okay, so I've kind of outlined the design. I, I mean, on the actual lines, I did the gray and the the thick water. But then around those, since the rest of the t-shirt is going to be in black, I outlined everything else around it in the black. And now I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. So... So once again, I'm going to start with the gray and outline my triangle. Sometimes when you flip it over, you got to readjust to make sure your lines are all visible. Sometimes the t-shirt will want to flop over on some of your lines. So I just kind of 
use the cuticle pusher to straighten things out and make sure that I can see all of my lines on there. And now we'll go ahead and outline that. Okay, now I've extended my, my lines out, so now I'll use my regular black dye and I'll put it on and still leave a little bit of a gap and let it spread some and then I'll touch that up, but I'll dye the whole rest of the shirt. This here will be my rainbow up here. Right now I'm going to get the inside of the triangle, the prism, dyed. So I'll use my thick black dye for that again. I don't want this dye to spread too much. It, this is my regular black dye here, so it's going to spread more. So I'm putting this on and just leaving a little bit of a gap so that it can spread on its own here. Okay, so now for our rainbow here, I'm going to start with the red up here at the top and I'm going to put it fairly close to the black line there because I want the two of those to spread together. And then I'm going to leave just a little bit of a gap on this other side because I want the orange and the red to spread together. So we'll get the colors put on I'm just lightly coloring it I'll go back and add more dye to this but to start with I want to get all of the colors on and let them start spreading together so I'll do the same thing I'm going just a little bit away from the line and letting the two come together in the middle I'm going to flip it over and dye those on the other side. And I know I kind of jump back and forth, but I like to get a little bit of the dye spreading. So the black is still spreading a little bit. Uh, when I flip this back over, I'll be ready to finish dyeing the black. But I'm going to dye the whole rest of the other side right now. But one thing important is I don't move my tea around. I try to make sure I hold it in place because the dye on the table might spread around on the rest of the design if you move it around too much on the table. And then I make sure to wipe the table up really good in between and I switch up and get clean rags as needed. Okay, so there are the <clears throat> rainbow colors. Now I'm going to go ahead and dye the rest of the t-shirt in the black. Now 
And this is just my regular black dye. And these are my little bottles with the really nice fine tip on them. What that's going to do is allow me to put smaller amounts of dye on so I can be more precise with it. And I found these on Amazon.com and I'll have a link down in the description. Okay, and now I'm going to flip it over one last time. But what I'm going to do is put some dry, clean rags over top of my design area so that when I flip it over any of the excess dyes can kind of slowly seep down into the rags as I finish dyeing the t-shirt. And that also allows me to flip it over without having to wipe up underneath the t-shirt right now. So I can take another clean rag here and put this on top and just give just a little bit of a press and that's going to soak up some of that excess dye so it's not moving around in there in places I don't want it. Okay, there is the dark side of the moon. This is a more detailed stitch design. And like I say, you can use the same process on any design that you want to do. You just got to figure out your outlines and then how to do the inner stitching. But thank you for watching. Please like and share my videos and we'll be back with more. Good morning. Okay, so we're back here with the dark side of the moon. So I let this batch for 48 hours and then I rinsed it really good in the sink and then I ran it through the wash one time and that gets you know, a good bit of the dye out so that when I'm in here cutting the threads, I'm not getting the dye moved around and it's not also not getting on my hands. So what we're going to do is start pulling the threads. And I got my handy dandy little seam ripper here. I don't know. Yeah, I guess you can see that. So what we're going to do is just open up Let's zoom in just a little bit here. So what I'm going to do is open up here and find these threads down in here. And just start cutting those. And that's the reason I use the tan so that on this black I can see that thread quite easily there that I need to cut. I just get into there and just start snipping them. And I'll usually just go through and snip as many of these as I can find in there. Some of them you can just open up the creases and go through the row and cut those. But I'll usually try to cut as many as I can and then I just slowly start opening the design up. So we'll zoom back out here. And I'll just go through and start cutting everything. And once I pretty much have all of the threads cut, then I go around and I use the seam ripper to just kind of loosen some of the threads. You know, so if, if I have several stitches here, rather than trying to pull that all the way through there from one end, I'll just grab the seam ripper and just loosen the stitches up. So that's what I'm going to do next, is just loosen those and then I'll go around and start pulling them all out. Okay, now time to start pulling the threads. And this is something I just usually will find the 
the knots. Some of them, they're just big straight runs I can pull out. And I still want to try to pull gently. If something feels like it's sticking, then I'll go in and investigate and see what's holding it up. I don't want to just yank a thread through in case it's going to stick up on something and tear a hole in the t-shirt. So during the whole process, you just want to be really careful that you're not damaging the tea as you're working in any way. And when I do the initial wash on this, uh, I put it in one of those net garment bags and I wash it on delicate cycles so it doesn't get tossed around and the stitches don't get pulled against too much. And once the, that wash is done, I get all these stitches pulled, then I'll just put it in on regular cycle and I do two more hot washes just to get the excess dyes out. So now there's my design. But like I say, this one here, this is the inside of the T. And like I say, there's two of them in here, so I can pull the other one out. So right now it looks perfect, but like I say, I when I work on the inside of the T, I have to reverse the image, and this is why, because when you turn the T right side out, then my image is backwards. So search sure somebody will love this, but I will do another one for the custom order. And next time when I'm drawing this out on the inside of the t-shirt, I will put the design out this way so that when I flip it around the other way, then we'll be going the correct direction. So there's the t-shirt, both of the t-shirts. And when I get them all washed and dried, then I'll put the final results at the end of this video and we'll be done. Thank you for sticking with me. Please like and share my videos.